Kiora. So I'm from a really small town in the, in the US of about 3,000 people uh, next to the Mississippi River. And uh, it's mostly surrounded by cornfields, so there's not a whole lot to do there. And so that's kind of how I ended up getting interested in, in technology and blockchain. And so I really love this venue because it's a horse race track. And that's actually where my journey started, is in middle school, I had this computer course at the end of the day. And I had always finished with about 30 minutes left. And I didn't want to start doing homework yet because it had been a long day and I was kind of tired. So I decided to get some sort of hobby. And the hobby I chanced upon was, uh, interestingly enough, betting on horse races. <laughs> so I, t I took about $20 of birthday money uh, that I had and started betting on horse races online every day. And eventually I started building these models uh, just in Excel uh, and predicting which horses would win and did this for about three or four years. Um, and then by the end of middle school, I decided that I should get into something that's safer than horse racing. Um, so I decided to get into the financial markets and proceeded to lose <laughs> half my money because it was 2008. Um, and so after that, fast forward a couple of years, I came across this thing called Bitcoin and ended up reading the paper published about it and thought it was really interesting because it was the first time somebody had created some form of money that wasn't really controlled by a government. You could send it around the globe very quickly. At the time, you could do it very cheaply. Um, and it wasn't really, feasibly anyway, able to be shut down. Um, fast forward another couple of years. And the problem with Bitcoin was, though, that it never really actually fulfilled this sort of vision that it had. It never really became this sort of money that, money that people use for payments. And instead, it kind of drifted into this direction of, of what we call dig digital gold. So people began to value it as this sort of digital gold commodity uh, just like any other investment that people bought just because they thought the price was going to go up. And the reality is today no one really uses Bitcoin for, for much actual usage. And what had excited me about it in the beginning was the concept that it could switch things to more cooperative peer-to-peer -peer business models and that it could disintermediate uh, rent-seeking incumbents or rent-seeking corporations. Uh, so the idea is that you have a business that extracts a lot of value from its users, doesn't really provide much in return, uh, why not get rid of them and switch to a more peer-to-peer -peer model? And in 2000, late 2013, early 2014, another project came out called Ethereum, uh, which is basically very similar to Bitcoin, except it enabled you to program the money itself. So a simple example is if you wanted to enter into a financial transaction with someone with Bitcoin, you still had to trust the other person, and you'd have to send your money to a third party uh, if you wanted to do anything beyond just sending money. And with Ethereum, you could actually enter into these complex financial agreements and financial contracts. And so I was thinking about, well, what's the best way to disintermediate the financial system? And I thought the answer was not to work with it, um, you know, not, not try to do it from the inside, but instead just do something completely radical, which is create a platform where anyone can create derivatives uh, on anything very, very cheaply. So the idea is basically that financial markets have three problems today. One is they're pretty segregated. So if I want to trade, uh, say, stocks in South Africa, or my friend in South Africa wants to trade stocks in the US, it's very difficult for that to happen. It's even more difficult for it to happen if it's, say, China, the US, and vice versa. The other thing is financial markets are pretty expensive. There's a lot of hidden fees in them. Um, and then the third thing is just that it's not really feasible to create your own financial market on something. And my idea is that I think it should be feasible to do that. So today in the US, if you wanted to create a financial market on, say, the price of a pound of onions uh, in the future, why would you want to do that mid you're an onion farmer? Um, it would cost you around 30 million or so to get it off the ground, um, which also hinders experimentation. Because if the cost to run a single experiment is 30 million bucks, not very many experiments are going to happen. And so I created this project called Augur, which is built on Ethereum, which enables you to create new financial markets uh, for around you know, 20 to 30 bucks drops a million. Um, and the idea is that anyone anywhere in the world can trade on them. Um, the platform doesn't really know who you are, or where you're from, or anything about you. And that, that's kind of the core idea. Um, and for that, what I primarily did there is write the smart contracts on Ethereum. Those are mostly done. So now what I'm primarily doing is investing in other blockchain projects in the space 
because the work going forward for Augur is UI stuff, which is not my, not my skill set. Um, and so I'd be happy to talk to anyone uh, in New Zealand who's either in the blockchain space or, or anyone who actually just wants to learn more about it um, from either an investment standpoint or just you know, free advice. Thanks.